All right. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar, the five-minute phone call that leads to 100K in sales. Just to give you a little bit of background, um, we did this webinar earlier in the spring, or maybe it was um, early summer or late spring. And of course, this was right in the heart of pan uh, the pandemic. And the context behind this uh, was, you know, we, we suddenly had to make this great shift and we were now disrupted and we had to connect with people in different ways. And of course, as we all know, we started jumping on a ton more Zoom meetings uh, to the point where maybe we even uh, have gotten Zoom fatigue. And that is definitely a phenomenon uh, that we are probably still grappling with. Um, but at the, one of the other outcomes is that we kind of started to realize, or hopefully as we go through today's webinar, again, realize the value of the phone call, the value of connecting with someone on the phone, right? And it, and it kind of fits this nice middle balance, especially as a business purpose, where um, you know, it's not going to be the extent of a full camera on Zoom meeting in terms of our energy. Um, but at, at the same time, we're going to be getting more of a connection than as if we were just sending an email or a text or communicating through some kind of typed out message. Um, and many of us, which is great, who are embracing this change are able to see a lot better results in not only in how quickly we can make a connection, but how quickly we can move sales cycles forward faster by adopting, um, just kind of going back to the phone call and becoming friendly with it again. So I will tell you a little bit about myself here to start. My sales background. So in, in college, I worked at various retail jobs. Uh, I worked for Borders, which was like a nationwide bookstore in the United States that is no longer with us. Um, and then I also worked for GameStop, which is another nationwide chain uh, in the United States, and I believe globally. And they are uh, struggling like many brick and mortar stores, but uh, uh, like many, if anyone else has worked in retail, it's kind of where I got my first taste of sales and, and found that I really enjoyed the concept of selling and helping someone find, uh, you know, being an advisor to someone as they were kind of looking for, on their buying journey and uh, helping them find that right fit for them. And uh, at that time, I was in college to become a history professor. And when I was finishing up college, I was kind of at this great crossroads in my life. Uh, I had to find a job to take care of myself because my parents had moved all the way to Texas. So I was on my own. And this is also coming after the Great Recession. So, uh, I, you know, horror stories about hearing taxi drivers with PhDs. I, I wasn't really sure I wanted to follow the, uh, the teaching route. And I kind of liked this idea of, of sales. I didn't know what I was going to do, though. My sister forwarded me a job listing to Equinox. So Equinox Fitness is a nationwide chain of luxury gyms in the United States, um, but we're also in Canada. And uh, that was a mostly commissioned job. So that was a big change for me, going from this retail environment that was hourly, uh, but now having the opportunity to make a ton more money, but with commission. And uh, one of the things I learned early on right off the bat was the power of the phone call. So right off the bat, I did have some initial success and very different from retail where we wait for the people to come to us, right? Everything's like inbound in person and you, you, you help what comes in, you sell what comes in. This whole concept of, of using something like the phone to now proactively generate business and to proactively make a connection with someone who was not in front of you was very foreign to me at that time. But luckily, it was something I embraced and found success with. And my first, you know, the first sale I ever made was by calling someone, you know, given a list of people uh, and started calling and called someone and didn't get a hold of that person, but did leave a message. And I got a call back. And, you know, she said, hey, uh, you caught me at the right time. What do I need to do to get started? And I was like, wow, this is so cool. Like, I can just call people, put it out there, and then, you know, something will come back eventually. So I had a successful first year in that sales role. After about a year, I was promoted to regional sales manager. And that's where I spent my time for the next five plus years with Equinox. So I uh, had been uh, leading and uh, managing small sales teams of anywhere from three to five people um, and anywhere from 12 to 20 salespeople at a time in the New York tri-state area. 
that is uh, the New York Westchester area where I live now, um, Connecticut, Long Island. And by the way, um, I am coming to you from Westchester, New York, just north of New York City. I would love to know where everyone else is coming from. So go ahead and put it in the chat because we're going to have people from all over the place, which is awesome. Uh, so go ahead as I continue on with my story here, let us know where you're coming from and uh, we, can, we can see uh, what kind of community we have here on today. But for the next five years, I spent my time as a regional sales manager and what I became known for um, was leading turnaround teams. So we have an award uh, at the company where the biggest sales, to, uh, the biggest difference from one year to the next in sales. Uh, would be given an award and you had to be the top five out of 100 teams in the company as well. And uh, out of my five years as a regional sales manager, I helped turnaround teams win three out of those five years. So that's something I'm very, uh, very, very proud of. And the other side uh, of my time there was also in sales training. So I did help uh, over the course of that time, also at our New York City headquarters, help to train over 1,000 um, sale, uh, salespeople and also executives, managers. So everyone would come to sales training and um, we would start on day one and we would start right with the phone. That was one of my favorite things to teach was how do you, you know, how do you successfully uh, start a phone call? How do you successfully create a conversation on a phone call? And then how do you get someone to take action on a phone call as well to get that sales process moving? So yeah, we have Denise from London, Scott from Chicago, Heather, Jay from Calgary, Garth from Calgary, yep. And uh, Robert from just outside of Calgary. <laughs> Not the same as Westchester, New York, but close. Yeah, that's, that is very close, I gotta tell you, Westchester, man. So um, awesome, great to have everybody. Uh, and then what happened this year for me? Well, so this year uh, during the pandemic, I was not working because our clubs were closed at Equinox. Um, luckily, I, was a little, I still kept my job, but I wasn't actually present in a club. Um, and I you know, came across this opportunity with KO Advantage Group. And I saw a post that Kim had on LinkedIn. I do love LinkedIn. I love connecting with people. And you know, she was looking for sales trainers. And uh, that was something that really appealed to me, um, this idea of focusing on sales training. And I started part-time because I wasn't sure it was going to happen with my job at Equinox. Um, and and you know, it, it, it was great um, right from the beginning and a really a great learning experience for me. But one of the things uh, was kind of relearning. So one of the things that happened during my time with Equinox is we moved, you know, over those five years, and any of you who are in sales might, might have had the same experience. We moved away from phone calls and everything became about email. And, it, and we, you know, we discovered the bulk email and we discovered the mail merge. And it was like, you know, more emails, more emails was, was the answer, more emails to more people more frequently. But eventually, you know, what happened? We, we, we bled our pipelines dry, right? We lost the credibility. We lost that person to person touch. We lost the personalization. We lost the, the real connection. And then it became about, all right, well, what do we need to do? Because emails aren't working anymore. Then it became text message, right? Okay, the text message. Now that's really fast response rates. Uh, and, you know, we're getting, people are getting back to us and it's a new way to break through. And text messages are still great. But one of the things I found with text messages, I found that my salespeople were struggling because they were getting responses, but they weren't necessarily making connections or getting information the way you could if you have a conversation with someone over the phone. And yes, it is good to get a response, but so much of the sales process and building value is going to be based on your ability to form a connection, but also understand the value for that person specifically and be able to now get them excited and get them emotionally bought in to what it is that you're offering. And at some point, you're going to need to move off the text message to achieve that. So KO Advantage Group, who I joined part-time, you know, who are we? For any of you, I know some of you are in a community, so it's great. For anyone who's not, you, we are the only sales process that is specific for business to business that is connecting clients with emotional intelligence to, to close high value services for premium prices. What do we do specifically? What do we provide? We provide more sleep to predict, right? So if you can predict what is coming in the next 30 days, what is actually going to close, how your funnel is gonna move, 
if you can predict over the next 90 days what your funnel is going to look like and what deals are going to be closed, how much more sleep, how much more relief could you have either as a business owner, as a salesperson? And also with that comes empowerment. This should be something we talk about today. The ability to gain the right clients, to focus on the right clients, to not just have to accept whatever's coming in or coming at you and not be searching for anything with a pulse and a credit card. Because it's not just about getting more sales, more sales, more sales. It's about getting the right sales that can turn into long-term relationships, that turn into higher value, overall lifetime revenue, and your ability to also save your time and your resources and energy, not chasing the wrong ones. Because not every dollar is, a, is the same in terms of being a good dollar or a wise dollar. Some dollars pay off more than others. And yes, Neezy, I will make you the host really quickly. I believe I did. And then you dropped off for a second, but you're back. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And of course, less anxiety and less uncertainty, right? Is there not enough anxiety and uncertainty in the world today? Yes, there is enough. If anyone agrees, please let me know in the chats. And also there's Zoom reactions too. So if you can, uh, I'm not sure if anyone knows how to do that. You can throw a thumbs up, you can clap, et cetera. So feel free to also send some reactions my way. Those are fun to use. Um, but yeah, less anxiety, right? Less uncertainty. That is what we want to provide. As I continue on through the year, went back to work for Equinox, continued working for KO Advantage Group, wanted to do both. Eventually it wasn't sustainable. I was, felt like I was burning the candle at both ends. I was becoming stressed out and run down. But at the same time, I knew where my heart was and I knew where I felt the opportunity was. The opportunity for my goals and my dreams to come to fruition in the next few years. And ultimately what I came to realize is that the person who chases two rabbits catches neither one. We have, of course, we have choices, right? Sometimes that could be too many choices. We put ourselves in a position where we're doing that, we're doing this, we're doing other things. And yes, it is good to try out different things, but ultimately, if we want to move forward, we want to move forward with speed, confidence, power. We want to get intentional and we want to get focused. I made that decision now to work full time for KO Advantage Group. So that is my rabbit. That is the rabbit I'm going to be chasing. But in terms of what we're talking about today and the five minute phone call, the five minute phone call leading to the outcome of 100K in revenue or whatever it is for your business, maybe it's a thousand dollar deal at this time, maybe it's 10,000, maybe it's a million. And, you know, we're not saying that the, the one five minute phone call is going to lead to that outcome. It's the phone call that's going to get that process started. But what that phone call is going to, what's going to make that phone call effective is chasing the right rabbits and not trying, trying to chase all rabbits. And again, there's, you know, there's no way, like, can, can it really happen? Some of us on this, on this uh, webinar, I'm sure are very um, hopefully open to the phone and have seen the results of the phone. Like if you love the phone, if you're crushing phone calls, like let us know, let other people know in the chat so they know that they are not alone. Or maybe you will encourage someone who is reticent about the phone because that is what we see a lot of. And uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be generational. It could be generational. Uh, I've seen as a sales manager in my experience, there tends to be more of a reluctance to get on the phone. You know, the more, the younger, um, the younger the person is. However, it's not going to be the case for everyone. We're going to talk about now, how can we make that phone call precise and how can we make it effective? Heather Smith, yes, 90% of the phone, love it. Filtering the right prospects. We're going to start there. Who are the right, who are the right prospects to be calling? Building empathy before logic. We want to be selling on emotion right from the beginning. How do we do that quickly? How do we do that from the start? And inviting the right to work with us. You know, this is, this is actually gonna be, of course, a mutually beneficial relationship. Hopefully we're striving to benefit the other party more than we are striving to benefit ourselves. 
but we want to have the confidence, right? That they, they are, this is going to be an opportunity for them to work with us with our product or service. And it's positioning it. We want to position from the beginning that that is going to be the case. So it starts with selectively choosing the clients and engaging only the ones that are showing excitement. There's a difference between people who want our product or service and people who need our product or service. Which one is better to work with? Someone who wants our product or service or someone who needs our product or service? What do you think? Feel free to let me know in the chat. Okay, yeah, so I'm seeing some, 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 uh, some answers here. Need, they want it, they want it. Yeah, so, you know, we want to be ideally working with those who want our service and want to work with us. Why is that? Yes, a lot of people need probably what we have to offer. Ultimately, though, if they do not want it, you know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. And if we're only focusing on someone who needs it, but doesn't want it, we're going to be exhausting ourselves. And that is where, you know, we meet that frustration and the sales cycles, they start to elongate. They start to grow longer and longer. And we might be just driving and driving and driving, but we need a little bit of counter force, right? To make something happen. Simon Sinek talks about this really well in his in his talk, his very famous talk about the golden circle and starting with why. Hit one of the quotes is, do not you know, seek out or try to lead people who um, need what you offer. People try uh, uh, seek out those who believe what you believe. And that is where you'll actually be able to get results, the right results. It's important that we are now in control of our destiny for the rest of, for the rest of this year and for 2020, 2021 as well, right? 2021 is like this glittering fresh opportunity. What will be different in 2021? I'm not sure. None of us are really sure, especially for the beginning of 21. But you know, either way, it's like a, now a fresh start. We either way, like at worst, we've adapted a little bit to this new normal. So now it's like go time. Being in control of your destiny for 2021 starts now. That's, that starts right now. So what, you know, what is the action that you're going to take over the next 30 days, over the next 90 days? 90 days is too long. Today, what action are you going to create today? Creating a list of 100 target prospects. Who are your ideal 100 targeted prospects? that you can make a list today, spend the next two hours, and really now confirm who is going to be worth it, who's going to lead you to that 2021, to your goals, to help you get back on the path or continue on the path of your dreams. Who are gonna be the right clients, right? Because what is your strategy to keep the excitement high? If, if, if there's no purpose, right? How are we going to stay excited to actually continue to follow up? and to continue to do these uh, spend the time prospecting. Jim Rohn says, you know, people will pay the price, uh, people, people will pay the price if they could see, you know, clearly the purpose, the future. They will pay any price if they can see that compelling future. We wanna make sure now before we go, before we start reaching out to other people that we have re refocused for ourselves. What is gonna be that outcome that's gonna keep us motivated to now reach out and serve. So as we compel, we take the time, right, to intentionally compel action in ourselves, then it's gonna be, how do we compel action in others, right? And we're gonna talk about the phone call, um, but you know, how do we get off that phone call on the right foot right away? I mean, there's a couple of things that we, we wanna do initially, right, to compel the right action. Number one is how, how do we start that phone call? So what, what we teach here is, you know, how are you feeling today? Not how are you doing? Not how are you going? How is it going? 
How are you feeling today? And the reason why as studies have shown that when you start with how are you feeling today, making that small change creates a little bit, that little bit of emotional awareness and engagement right from the beginning. You're proven to have a more engaging conversation. And now you're tuning in a little bit from the beginning, planting that seed of emotion that now you can use as you continue the conversation and now build and dive deeper, which we'll talk about to really bring out those emotions. But how are you feeling? So when I call, the first thing is, hi, this is Mike from KO Advantage Group. How are you feeling this afternoon? How are you feeling this evening? Then we can move on right into an opening line that's going to create excitement and interest. Important to remember though, again, that nobody cares about us. So it should not be about us. It should not be who you are and why you're calling unless the why you're calling is very, very specific to what's in it for them. W I F M. What's in it for me? The unspoken question in everyone's mind, especially when someone's picking up the phone, people can be a little defensive, right? We want to make sure right off the bat that we are showing them that we are not going to be wasting their time and that there's, there's value in extending this conversation that much further. Also, in terms of the elevator pitch, we're not going to go completely into an elevator pitch today. Um, we actually have a webinar next week, which is specifically about creating an opener that is going to, that is going to bring that excitement and create that buy-in from the get-go. Um, but with an elevator pitch, something you might want to think about is framing your elevator pitch as a question. What would it mean to you if? What, if it, what would it mean to you if your business could do X, Y, or Z? Does that make sense? Action leads to fast response. So we, we want to, of course, create action on a next, uh, a next step. If we have a data, if, if now we're before the call, if we have, if we're using inbound marketing to create um, leads and we have a data capture page, something we want to be cognizant, cognizant of is making sure we are getting that phone number so we can quickly respond. We can, we can quickly engage to drive sales. And then what is the action you want people to take? Very clear. It's very important that this is clearly illustrated if you do have a lead capture page, phone number, and the action you want someone to take. Speed is of the essence if you're, if you're getting inbound coming to you. Following up within five minutes of a web lead, you are nine times more likely to convert. So what we've seen is that it's like, you wanna think about five minutes. If you can follow up within five minutes, you have 80% more likely of a chance to close that opportunity. Every five minutes, we lose 5%. It moves that quickly. And by the end of 24 hours, you could have almost a 0% chance of closing. It's very quickly. We want to be able to just respond, get on the phone and make the call and make the connection. Now, over time, you know, we can be a little bit more selective with our follow-up. You know, we can put a little bit more barriers, more hoops that have to be jumped through um, before we do invest time in making that connection. You know, as we're um, at the moment, you know, if our calendars are empty, we want to, you know, fill up that calendar. That's, that's the number one goal. But as we get more busy, as we create more revenue, now we can be a little bit more selective, right? And who are we going to be investing our time in? That is the goal that we want to get to. We want to be so busy that we can be selective. And one of the great ways to do that is, you know, you can have a form, ask some questions, figure out how much they really know and how invested they are in, in making this positive change. You know, something that always like that I think of when, when I see this is, um, you know, my wife and I have a, uh, you might've seen the photo before, a miniature Husky. 
Um, he is the cutest thing in the world. Uh, and he is like my little son, our little son. Um, but, you know, he is an Alaskan Klikai, so it is a specific breed. They're pretty rare. And, you know, we had to apply to get this breed. And I was just blown away uh, as my wife was showing, these, showing me these applications and we had to sit down and do them. And, um, you know, it was like page after page, like question after question, like question. It was like, honestly, like 12 pages of questions that we had to fill out to even like get a meeting to see if we can like have this, have this dog. Um, and, you know, that is just, that's a great example now, like the demand is high enough for this type of breed where they can be selective. Um, and at the price point um, and at the rareness, um, they want to make sure that it's going to the right owners and that people are really serious about having that. Side note, if everyone, anyone has a dog, I would love to know because I love dogs. Feel free to put into the chat what kind of dog you have because um, uh, that would just be great for me to look at. We can talk, uh, we can talk dogs. Denise has a Yorkie poo, okay. I love it. Okay, I will not get too sidetracked on dogs. Now it's time to get on the phone when we have the information. And one of the interesting things that I've learned in my time, especially recently, is the similarity between hostage negotiation and phone sales. And it's actually great. Um, we do have, um, it's pretty exciting. We have Scott Telema here uh, listening in on the webinar. And uh, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, us, yep. Yeah. And, um, he is one of actually the, uh, the leading hostage negotiation trainers um, in the United States um, and it really entire North America. Um, he is an incredible expert. He has an amazing um, also like TED Talk on YouTube. So definitely go out and check that out because um, you can learn some amazing things from hostage negotiators. One of the things that has made that make hostage negotiators so effective is you know they follow this stairway here and this is the stairway to behavioral change which is what we are trying to inspire in our prospects but in sales a lot of times we're taught to go straight for the rapport like go right in like hey like i see this you know uh that you also like this or you went here and um you know try to create like that almost surface level rapport and that can help but what's a lot more powerful is following the stairway and starting with active listening. Don't try to make a judgment. Don't even try to jump to commonality right away. Start with actively listening to the other person, the questions, building empathy with how they are and how they're feeling, right? And that's, that's why it's so good to open up the phone call with how are you feeling today? Because it kind of trains us to remember to tune into that empathy right off the bat. And then next, we can build a rapport. And this is now true rapport. This is rapport not based on surface commonalities, but this is based on an understanding of where the person is at, what they are going through and who they are. And once we have now moved up these three stairs, we can begin to influence in a positive way and then motivate and inspire behavioral change but it's on that person's terms. Emotions, emotions force change. If we want to get to the point where someone realizes this isn't working anymore, I'm frustrated, I'm exhausted. I can't do this for another three months. And one of the other great things that hostage negotiators do is they label, they label the emotions. You, you, you do not just uh, nod, right? This is now where we actually acknowledge, like, sounds like you're really frustrated. I mean, it sounds like you're exhausted. What would it mean to you to be able to have a process and a recipe that you could follow to actually make you feel invigorated because of the results that you're seeing? This is where we want to get. We can get there quicker and easier on the phone. So here is actually from Harvard Business Review from this month. 
I posted this on LinkedIn a day ago because I thought the article was fantastic. And the article is about this year we've moved so much, and not even this year, over time we've moved, as I mentioned before, so much to email, text, social media, typing-based communication. We're also seeing people start to go back to the phone. Why? Because they realize, they kind of feel, whether it's a gut level or whether it's actually something they could quantify, that they're getting better results connecting with people over the phone. And what Harvard Business Review found was that the data, they, the studies they've done recently shows that people overestimate how awkward it will feel to talk on the phone or underestimate how connected it will make you feel to someone else. And they did this for people who were friends. They had, they had first people you know, reach out to their friends, whether it be email or text or versus a phone call and, and evaluated how they felt. And they also had them do this with strangers and really with strangers, people thought it was going to make, it was going to be this awkward, horrible experience. And it turned out not to be the case. And I'm sure those of us around here who do make calls consistently and do use the phone know that like, you know, whether it's just getting the first call out of the way um, or being consistent with it, it, it's, it can lead to such better results. Even the other day myself, I was like, I was sending out emails. I must've sent out 50, 60 emails in the morning prospecting and you know, I wasn't getting anywhere. I wasn't getting any responses and I was getting a little down. And then I, you know, just had a reset. I picked up the phone and this isn't going to happen every time, but I, the first person I called converted to a meeting and I was like, wow, great reminder. Um, and I'm sure Heather, you know, 90% of her, of, you know, of her FOP is the phone. I'm sure she would agree with this as well. When do emotions matter? Emotions matter always, but especially in certain situations. You know, for, for simple solutions, we can be a little bit more rational. For emotional, complex, I mean, for complex solutions, we want to definitely be more emotional. And we want to, again, label those emotions. Don't be afraid to call it out. I was meeting with Kim yesterday, uh, Kim Orleski, who's our founder. And she was actually saying, you know, she's, we started the meeting and, you know, the first thing uh, I was a little stressed and, you know, the first thing she said to me, she's like, you look stressed. And that was actually wonderful because then I could like, I could deal with it and we could, we can talk about why that was. And that's, and I got so much value from that meeting because I didn't have to hold in my stress and I could actually address what it was and have that solved first. With, when money is involved though, this is especially important, right? If people start to think about cost, the, the, the purchase, you know, the reality is how much money do people have now to spend? How much money, you know, if you ask somebody how much they have to spend or what's in their budget, what are they going to say? Let me know in the chat. <laughs> Correct. Yes. So Garth says zip. Uh, Robert says zero dollars. Yes, that is the case. How much money do we have to spend with all the uncertainty that's coming? All the uncertainty, you know, with the um, the what the semi recessions or whatever's going on in the world. You know, nothing. Right. That is why it's important that we slow down. We're now going to be focusing on the motions, but not just the emotions for emotion's sake. Destination versus transportation. We want to focus where we're taking our clients, not how we're going to get there. And we're not even going to focus as much on where we are right now because where we are right now sucks. That's the reality of it. And that nobody knows this better than the airlines, right? When you plan a vacation, at least for me in, you know, in New York and it's cold and it's rainy and it's windy. And now I'm thinking of like, where is it the Dominican Republic? Is it Cancun? Like that beautiful, blissful experience, right? That is just, uh, it's, it's literally like going to a different world and the temperature and the thought of going to a beach instead of shivering. Oh, 
airlines know this and they, they get you focused on that destination instead of the transportation. Nobody's going to talk about like how awful it is to go to the airport and to try to find parking there and to wait in security for God knows how long. I mean, luckily right now it's not as long as it used to be. Right. But maybe there's other fears. We have to wear a mask, right? Um, getting on the plane, you know, being cramped in again, maybe it's not as cramped as it used to be, but, but the, the, the point is, we want to get our prospects focused on that destination, that exciting place of the bridge between where they are now, but where could they, where could they be? What, where, where do they want to be in six to 12 months? What does that look like? And more importantly, how would that feel? How would that feel? And if we can get them there, then we work backwards right? So if here's where you want to be in six months from now, and you know how good this is going to feel, when would you, when would you actually like to see that result happen? The answer to that, right, is now. I mean, I want to be there now. Like I'm saying six months because I'm not there, but the reality is I want to be there now. I, I, I prefer to be there now versus six months. That said, we need to start now. 95% of purchase decisions take place subconsciously. It's not gonna be the logic. It's gonna be the emotion. Malcolm Gladwell talks about this in Blink, right? You know, we make the majority of our decisions and we actually make good decisions most times, the best decisions based on our gut, based on Quick evaluation, as horrible as that sounds, because we know, we, we just know intuitively so many things. But then when we do make that decision, it's going to be emotion first and logic to justify. Emotion first, logic to justify. And if in our sales conversations, we haven't touched on the emotion, that's where we're trying to get, we're trying to push, 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 and we're not getting past the logic barrier and someone wants to think about it, right? They want to wait. They're just not ready. Why aren't you ready? Can't even come up with a good reason because they can't really vocalize what's going on in their gut, but they just know what their gut is telling them not to take action because the emotional, the emotional forces haven't been charged. And as we go through, we're going to continue to qualify our prospects. We focus on BAM, budget authority, need, and timeline. However, just to be clear, you know, we're never asking someone what their budget is or how much would they like to spend. We know the answer is nothing. We can ask these questions differently and be more indirect to find out. And if we are asking a question like, what is your goal? And where would you like to be in three months? Or where would you like to be in six to 12 months, right? If we get a number, especially if we can quantify this, we can kind of use this as, as, as a way to qualify the budget. Because if, if I could tell you, you want, you want to make $4. If I, if I told you that if you spend this $1, you will make $4, wouldn't it be worth it to spend the $1? Of course it would, right? Because I'm making three more dollars. So it's the comparison. Of course, it's an investment, right? When we're comparing it to what is going to benefit them, how it's going to make them more money, how it's going to make their business grow. It's not a cost now, it's an investment. But it's important, again, we're at, I'm, I'm asking this question, what would it mean to you? Or how much would it be worth it? Would it be worth it for you to invest 5,000 to get to the million dollars in 2021 that you're looking for? It's not, we don't want to tell the client what their return on investment is or should be. We want to ask the questions to have them tell us. They are, they are the one thinking through this and making the conclusion. That is the beauty of sales in so many ways, right? When it's done right, because you're not selling, you're not doing something to someone. You're, you're helping someone come to a conclusion and help themselves. And invite the right. So what we, what this means is, our business, you know, we want to think of it as like 
a tribe, as a members only club. Exclusivity is so important, right? We're not just taking anyone, we're taking the right people. And we've talked about it. people who wanna take action, people who wanna to get to somewhere better. Th these are the type of clients we wanna be attracting. Important also to anchor the expectations though. We cannot just be pie in the sky. Here's, you know, we've got this quick, easy, get rich cream because it's never like that, right? Real things, real results are not gonna be like that. We wanna be setting the expectations. How much time will it take? And what is, the, what is the approximate investment, right? And when we're talking about investment, if that time comes, probably not in the first phone call, but when it does, because studies have shown that people do want to be talking about price early. A majority of buyers actually want to have that conversation in the first conversation. So in sales, we're taught to, we were taught for many years to avoid it. We don't want to avoid it. I mean, who has time for that right now, right? To deal with a salesperson who's being like funny or not just trying to get around the question of what something costs. When we do present, we want to be doing it with confidence and we want to make sure we're anchoring another great psychological effect, but we want to start with the, uh, the highest tier of our pricing, right? Or the worst case scenario in terms of how long it could take to get results. You know, it could be, um, it could, you know, it could take up to 12 months to really see the results of this investment. However, most people see it in up in only six months. And, and, and depending on how things go, it could only be three months, but we're start we're, we're setting that expectation. And the same thing for price, you know, we, we're going to be putting our highest price out there first, giving an option lower and an option lower. So people can wrap their head around what's going to be the right fit. But as they do, the sticker shock has been set at a certain level because we have sticker shock no matter what, no matter what the dollar figure is, right? It's always expensive. It's always more expensive than we thought. Exclusivity. People want what they can't have. Scarcity drives people to act. We want to deal with action takers. And everyone today, I compliment you because you joined the webinar. You took, you, you're taking action, right? To, to, to increase your knowledge and to challenge yourself and to inspire yourself. We want to work with others who are like that. Action is also important because the longer it takes someone to make a decision, the less likely we are going to be to get the deal. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, that is where we were also start banging our head against the wall is if we're not going back to the starting with the right clients, qualifying, building up the emotions to motivate and inspire. But then if they're, you know, or and if maybe the want's not really there, you know, we come to find out for asking questions like, you know, what would this mean to you to make this change? You know, where would you like to be in six months or 12 months? And there's no excitement there. You know, it's, it's probably just not going to be the right person. This is for whatever reason, there's, there might be a need, but the, the want might not be there to take action. And when we do, when we do finally now, get the opportunity to work together. We want to think of it as the first day of the rest of our lives. A prospect is going to be going, they've gone on a journey with, the, with us through this process, but that is just the beginning. We wanna show them that we care, treat every interaction with passion, make good things happen. And we don't wanna just focus on the value of that one transaction in that moment. Over time, what could this relation mean to us? And hope everyone here agrees that that is how we should be handling, especially nowadays, right? Especially now with everything that's going to be going on, every dollar is scarce. People, there's fear in the world. There's enough fear, right? But if we can, if we can move out of this together, move to a better place together, we know we can. That is something I think we could all agree to as a better version of what could happen in the new normal. Because if we wanna go fast, go alone. But if we wanna go far, go together. So 
I commend everyone for, for taking the actions to join me today, right? And, and, I can, and I challenge you all to now take action based on what you learned from today. Make that list of 100. Get on the phone, make that connection. Do something different, shake yourself out of that comfort zone because you can continue where you are with the status quo. But we wonder, does our bank account reflect the work that we're putting in? Is it getting easier or is it getting harder? Are you sleeping better? Are you up at night? Are you hiring with ease? Do you have the opportunity or the ability to hire or has that been put off for a while? Is this the dream that you started a business? If you are a business owner, you started this business in the first place. Is this the dream? Are you on your way to your dream? Because you deserve it. I believe you deserve it. I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't believe I deserve it and you deserve it. Knowing what to do is, the, is a great first step, right? However, education is not application. If we have support and that we have accountability and take action and start to see the results, those that have done that, the only regret is not doing it sooner. I know that's been the case for me. Nabil, I feel like you really underpriced the course for the value that you received. So when we help people with our course, the feedback is really so much reward for us. It's like magic or something, right? This is the idea of now taking action and building that emotional connection. That is where the magic happens. So we offer sales training. We are a sales training company. What we spoke about today is, you know, just what we could speak about in 60 minutes. But I know everyone had a lot of options for their one hour today. So I appreciate you joining me. But I, I encourage you to do one of two things. Take action today on something you learned, especially a phone call. And if you're not comfortable with taking action yet on the phone, that is okay. We want, we want to meet with you. We offer a 20-minute sales strategy session to help everyone take action, to make every, help everyone make a positive change. And we also offer subscription-based sales training should you want to continue learning and growing. And we can, we can talk more about that, but we don't have to. That's fine. We are here to help. And Nizi, if you can put in the chat that link to book a meeting with myself, to go book a meeting with uh, our team, we want to get to know you better. You joined us here today. Let us help you. We bring immense value in just 20 minutes. Join us for 20 minutes. 20 minutes to take a deeper dive specifically around your business. We do this because our number one value is a quote by Zig Ziglar. You can have everything you want in life if you just help enough other people get what they want. I believe that. And that is, that is my mission. The longer you wait, that could be revenue that you're missing out on. And we want to offer you the slides as well. So hopefully these slides helped you. We can offer you the slides, we will follow up and send you the information. But what I would like to know, what is the one thing that you took away from today or will take action on today based on this webinar? Let me know please now in the chat. All right, awesome. Yes, Robert, pick up the phone and call. As just, you know, Harvard Business Review, it will, you will prove to yourself less awkward and uncomfortable than you may think. Denise, more calculated phone calls. Ask how they are feeling. Yes, how are you feeling today? Love it. And please also let me know if you have any specific questions. We have a couple more minutes here. If you have any specific questions that came to mind, go ahead and let me know. And Nizi just put the link to book a meeting with us for 20 minutes in the chat. 
let's connect and have a great conversation and get to know each other. Garth says more connecting emotionally with inbound leads. Yeah. Yep. And the, you know, those are, those are great ones to focus on for the emotional connection because they, they want it, right? If they came inbound, something already motivated them or inspired to them. So now we can, we can build it. We can, we can, we can find out what it is and we can create value around that. Thank you, Scott. Appreciate you joining as always. And Garth, the hundred list on both sides of our business equation. Yep. Yeah. For you, I know you have, you know, the two, the two sides. There's got, you know, there's definitely a hundred list for both of those sides. Thank you, Robert. Appreciate it. All right, everybody. Well, I don't see any specific questions, so I will thank you again for joining me today. Uh, I hope this was valuable for you, and uh, I'm excited to uh, connect with everyone further, all right? So uh, let's go make those calls and start those, start those deals, and um, you know, hope everyone has a great afternoon. Thank you, Denise. Say hello to your pups for me. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you.